Hi, it's Mrs. Miller here to talk to you today about supply and demand. Demand is all about consumers. It's how much people are willing and able to buy at every price. When price goes up, that means you're probably going to be less willing and able to buy that good. If price goes down, that means you're going to be more willing and able to buy that good. So the law of demand states that demand is downsloping because there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. But why is it downsloping? There's three reasons for a downsloping demand curve. The first is the substitution effect. If the price goes up for a product, you're going to buy less of that product and find something else to substitute for it. If the price goes down, you'll buy more of that good and stop buying something else that costs more. The second reason is the income effect. It has to do with consumer income and purchasing power. So if the price of a product goes up, that means that your dollar will buy less of that product. So you would tend to buy less of it as well. If the price goes down, your dollar can buy more. And so you would tend to buy more of it. Finally, the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now utility is all about satisfaction. How much enjoyment or satisfaction we get from a good is our utility. The law of diminishing marginal utility states that as you consume more units of a good, the additional satisfaction from each additional unit will eventually start to decrease. In other words, the more you buy of any good, the less satisfaction you get from each new unit. So in order for producers to get you to buy more of that good, they have to lower the price so that you'll buy the second and the third and the fourth unit. There are five determinants of demand. The first is taste and preferences, how much you like a good. Second is the price of related goods. Are they substitutes where if the price of one goes up, you'll buy less of the other? Or complements where if you buy one, you're going to buy more of the other. So if the price of one goes up, the demand for the other one will go down as well. Third is income. Income lets us know if a good is normal or inferior. A normal good is one you buy more of when your income goes up and an inferior good is one you buy more of when your income goes down. Number of buyers also affects the amount of demand. And future expectations of price. If you think the price is going to go up in the future, you're going to buy more of that good today. Just remember, changes in price don't shift the curve. It only causes a movement along the curve. Let's move on to supply. It's all about producers. The law of supply states that there's a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. If the price of a good goes up, that means you can make more profit, so you're going to tend to supply more. If the price goes down, you're going to supply less at that new lower price. And so with that direct relationship, we see that supply is an upsloping curve labeled S1. There are six determinants of supply. Resource costs and availability. Other goods prices. This is the opportunity cost of alternative production. If I make volleyballs, is it cheaper for me to make footballs or can I make more profit off of making footballs and make that transition easily? Technology, government taxes and subsidies. Higher taxes are bad. Lower taxes are good, and any time the government gives a subsidy, that means they're giving the producer money to do something, so the subsidies are always good. Expectations of future profit. When do I think I'm going to make the most money on this? If producer confidence goes up and I think I'm going to begin selling more goods, then you'll see an increase in supply. And of course, the number of sellers also affects how much is supplied. Remember, changes in price don't shift the curve. It only causes a movement along the curve. It's time to talk about what a shift actually looks like. Let's start with an increase in demand. If I increase demand, that means I'm going to have a new demand curve that's parallel to the original demand curve and to the right. Right is more, left is less. You do have to put in the new equilibrium point, labeled Q2 and the new equilibrium price, labeled P2. When you increase demand, that's going to immediately cause a shortage. That shortage is going to cause the price to increase, and at that new higher price, there's a greater quantity demanded, so we end up with an equilibrium 
that's higher in both price and quantity. Now let's look at a shift in supply. So let's say that supply decreases. Supply, supply is a little bit tricky because students want to decrease supply by making it go lower on the curve. But if you look at equilibrium quantity, you'll see that the new quantity is to the left of the original quantity, so it's a decrease. And we have a new price that's higher than the old price, so it's an increase. When supply decreases, it causes an immediate shortage. So the price goes up until the quantity demanded meets the new supply curve. And we have a new equilibrium quantity at Q2, P2. We can also have double shifts. Suppose that both supply and demand shift. In this case, we've decreased supply and increased demand. Here's a little tip. Anytime there's a double shift, either equilibrium price or equilibrium quantity is indeterminate. So how do you decide who that is? Well, what you can do is do a little chart and look at supply and demand independently. If supply decreases, we already noticed that price goes up and quantity goes down. If demand increases, we know that price goes up and quantity goes up. So we can tell that whenever we have an increase in one and a decrease in the other, price is going to go up in this case, and quantity is indeterminate. The general rule is that if they shift in opposite directions, price is indeterminate. If they shift in the same directions, quantity is indeterminate. Whenever you're doing supply and demand analysis, here are some quick steps that will help you get through it. Before the change, draw the supply and demand curve. Label original equilibrium price and quantity. When you're given the change, figure out if it affects supply or demand first. Which determinant causes the shift? Then draw the increase or decrease. After the change, label the new equilibrium. What happens to price? What happens to quantity? Is there a double shift that makes one of the two indeterminate? You should all be ready to tackle supply and demand. So for now, it's Mrs. Miller signing off.